Hi there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you two different ways to achieve the white detailing on acetate. Now I'm going to be making two shaker cuts today, but you can definitely apply these to any project with the acetate. I'm going to start off with two different uh, card bases. This one is a four by four inch card base. And I am going to add some blue tumble glass oxide ink to the middle here. Now this may seem a little bit uh, crazy, but this is going to create my background. But I do not want to get the outsides because I don't want that part to be seen. Um, I want that to be nice and crisp white. Um, and you'll see why when it all comes together. And then this is the second card, which is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, card. And you can see I'm just trying out that dye there to make sure I get the background all covered in the shaded lilac distress oxide ink. Again, for these parts here, you could just use some pattern paper and things. I just happen to be making my own uh, because this is what I felt like doing this morning. But I'm going to use the seedless preserves and go over it quite lightly with a first layer. And I'm not worried about the middle because I'm going to be cutting the frame out of the middle of this. So I'm just going around the outside. But then I'm going to come in with a second layer of exactly the same color and go over top of a stencil to create a slight pattern um, that will just create a little bit more interest around the outside. Obviously, the main interest is going to be in the shaker card and the detailing on the front of it. So I don't want it to be too much of a distraction. And again, you could also just use some pattern paper. I just happen to be doing it this way uh, because I felt like it. <laughs> and I also did want to mention, you can see that that stencil did not cover the whole front of that panel. I just shifted it down and although it doesn't match up perfectly, you would never notice that it doesn't quite uh, work perfect and cover the whole front. So you can just make do and no one will notice those small imperfections. Then I'm going to work on my other little card uh, front here. So this is for the uh, 4x4 inch card. And I'm just using a basic stripe stencil this time just to create that little bit of extra interest. Again, I'll be cutting the middle out of these so I don't need to worry about making sure that I've got that part all covered. Now with this stencil, because it is quite delicate, I'm doing more of a turning motion like a twisting back and forward motion with my mini inking tool otherwise the stencil kind of moves around all over the place and there's the front of that card finished now i'm going to move on to the first way that you can create the white detailing so i have a couple of butterfly stamps here and i'm just using the two detailed ones down the bottom i have them each on an acrylic block and what's really important here is i'm going to be using some hot off the press heat resistant acetate now this comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets and I've just cut it down to a smaller size sheet so that it's easier to work on. This is all that I need for my card today. I'm using some Versamark, uh, which is just a sticky embossing ink. And this is what my embossing powder is going to stick to. So the first way that you can do it is by using embossing powder. Now I know that you can't see it. And in fact, I can barely see what I'm doing here, but I'm just using those two different butterflies to stamp the front and kind of cover it, not completely with a little bit of space in, in between uh, all of the butterflies, but pretty much make a nice kind of butterfly pattern on the front. Now this is going to be for the smaller sized card, so I don't need the sort of the whole sheet to be absolutely covered. So I'm not being too pedantic about the outsides, but in general, I'm trying to cover most of it. And that way I can pick the best spot that I want to uh, when it comes to which part of this acetate sheet I will use. And I think I didn't say it before, but it is very important when you're using acetate in particular that you use some sort of anti-static powder tool. I have one of the little embossing buddy uh, powder bags that I use. And um, so that's what I put on before I do any heat embossing. So now I'm just going to melt it and this is what's really important because of course it's plastic and you have to keep your heat gun moving but this heat resistant acetate does emboss really really well. So that looks quite cool. Now we're going to move on to the second way that you're able to do it and this is the die. This is quite an old one. I'll see if I can find it and link it down below for you but it doesn't matter which die you're using. I'm going to use some Stick It double sided adhesive. Now these sheets in particular are really, really thin and I have covered the back of this sheet of paper 
in the stick it adhesive and then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine as many times as I can and I think I ended up with these five or six um, of my die cuts. Now each one of these die cuts has that sticky um, paper on the back of it and so I just need to peel away the release paper and that will allow me to stick it down. I have taken the die that I am going to die cut at the front and just placed it underneath my acetate sheet so that I can kind of get an idea of what I'm going to be covering up, what I need to um, have covered. And then I am, once I think I have them all sorted, I have kind of been placing them out a little bit, but not thoroughly. And then once I have it sorted, I peel off that release paper and stick it down. Now there are several brands uh, when it comes to the double-sided adhesive sheets. And I have a few of them, however, the Stick It double sided sheets are really, really handy because a couple of reasons. One, they are so, so thin and they die cut really, really well for intricate designs. And two, when you place them down, you can kind of place them down gently, but they don't become a permanent sticking uh, adhesive until you press down really, really firmly. So for some of these, I am able to kind of just lie them there gently until I think I have everything sorted all around them. And then you'll see me sometimes push really hard on them, and that is to make sure that they are well and truly sealed uh, where I want them. So you can see that I've pretty much got the whole front of that die all covered, and I'm going to cut off a couple of bits on the outside. But that is the two different ways that you are able to get the white detailed um, patterns on the front of your clear acetate sheets. So these both work equally as well and they both look very, very similar in my opinion. And now all it comes to is putting together these two cards. So I'm going to take the first die and die cut through the card front that we made. And you can see there that there's none of the white in the middle so it actually looks a little more completed now. And same here with the four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. I'm going to take that die and cut it out of the middle. All of the supplies that I've used today, I will do my best to list them down below. Uh, sometimes I forget the odd one and sometimes they just aren't available anymore. So as I said, I'll just do my best for you. And then once it comes to the sentiments on the front, I have a couple of these outline dies here and I have some of the black paper with the stick it adhesive uh, on the back. I could have used different adhesives here, but it was more that I had the stick it already out on my craft desk. So I'm going to run the two insides through on my die cutting machine and I've got just for you and happy birthday and you can see they have that stick it on the back. Then I'm going to run some really strong double sided adhesive on the back of my uh, card front but I did just quickly think I need to cut it down so that I've got a nice wee border uh, remaining because I, if you remember at the beginning of the video, we did the shaded lilac base that's sitting uh, to the left of the screen underneath the double sided adhesive. And remember how I avoided the edges, so that is what will become my nice crisp white edges. And so I needed to make sure that my card front was cut down just a little bit uh, in order to show those. So now, as I said, I'm going back to the double sided adhesive. This one in particular is from Alina's store on AliExpress. And I'll link it down below. It is a very, very strong double-sided adhesive. And I'm just putting it around all four sides so that it will hold down my acetate sheet. Now this is going to be the uh, die cutting one with the sticker adhesive. And you can see I have a couple of bits left over hanging over the edge. And you just need to cut these with scissors. It doesn't need to be too neat or anything perfect because no one will see them. And that's what it looks like from the front. Then to create the shaker portion, I'm going to take some of Alina's uh, craft foam tape and this stuff is really, really good as well. It comes in two different widths, which I love and appreciate and you are definitely able to cut them down even skinnier if you need to. So I'm just making sure that all of this, uh, the foam tape is buttered really closely together because I don't want there to be any escapees of my sequins. Now this purple sequin mix, it is from AliExpress and I will see if I can find it uh, for you. But if not, any sequin mix of course is fine or you could even put in little gems or little microbeads. You could put in anything that you have in your stash or you could even create your own from hole punches and things like that. Uh, I'm making sure that these are nice and full. I want there to be plenty in there. So I have put them all in the middle of my card base. 
spread them out just a tiny bit and then I will take off my release paper and put this down onto my card front. I did think there were a couple of little corners that I wanted to make sure it didn't leak so I just added another little piece of foam and then placed it down onto my card base. You do have to kind of line these up a little bit, but it's not too tricky. And make sure that you push down all of the sides so that you know it is sealed. Then here I have my little 4x4 four four inch card. And for this one, I am going to have no border around the outside, I decided. Uh, after all that uh, avoidance in the beginning of the edges, but that's okay. And then I have got my butterfly acetate sheet here. Now my acetate sheet is much bigger than what I need for my card. So I kind of just shift my card front around to find a spot that I like. And then when I see a spot of the butterflies, I am just going to press down and adhere it to that double-sided tape. Then just take a pair of scissors and trim off all of the excess from around the outside. So both of these options are a really good option when it comes to adding the white details. And I really like it because it kind of just dresses up a shaker card a little more than just having the plain acetate in the front. But there is definitely a time and a place for both of them. So it's fun to experiment and see what you enjoy doing. And sometimes it is better to have the plain acetate because it can create a really busy card front. And that's why I kept the outside patterns really plain and used just blue on blue and purple on purple so that it didn't create too much for the eye to kind of take in. And then for my little 4x4 four four inch card, I'm just adding in some iridescent and clear sequin mixes and then peeling back four of the corners of my foam tape so that I can place my card base nice and evenly down on my card front without getting it all skew with. And then once I have it all lined up, I just push down on those places and pull out the little tabs that I've created. And that way it's pretty good and lined up perfectly. The only thing left to do really is to add some sentiments and little details. Now remember I have the stick it adhesive on the back of my sentiments. So this one is nice and easy. This is just going to be the happy birthday one. So I can just peel it off and pop it down in the middle. And the black stands out really well from the sequin mixes and from the white details on the acetate. So I was happy with how this one stood out. However, when it came to the other card, I did feel like when I put it on top of the detailed acetate sheet and the colored sequins, it just felt like it got lost. So I took the outline die for it and outlined it in vellum. And then I used the stick it adhesive from that to adhere it down onto the vellum. And then I just used a little bit of plain liquid glue to put some dots behind the black letters um, on the back of the vellum. And that way I can stick it down onto the acetate and I know it's nice and secure. Sometimes with vellum you do have to be a little bit careful because you don't want any glue spots and things to show through the vellum. And that's the reason that I kept to the back of the black letters. So that will finish off this one. Then just as the very finishing touches, I have added some little white Nuvo drops. You could definitely use uh, enamel dots, would do the same thing, but I chose to use the white Nuvo drops and just added some finer details into the beautiful frames, uh, the die cut frames that I chose to use for these ones. That is my video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed these two ways to add the white detailing to your acetate sheets. I really, really appreciate all of your lovely feedback on my videos recently. You guys are super helpful and super kind, and I really appreciate everybody taking the time to do it. So thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.